Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a layout um, again from Oahu, and this one is focused on a tasty treat. If you've been to Oahu, I would bet you have been to this place. It's called Matsumoto's, and they have hands down the best shaved ice on the island. Um, we got some great pictures, so I'm excited to see how the, this layout comes together. And actually, it's going to be a two layout day because one of the layouts is one I pulled from my stash that I'd already put together, and I'm going to go ahead and use that, but then also create a complimentary one um, because it's going to take four pages to do all these pictures. So um, it's going to be fun. Let's check out my workspace and get started. All right, so this is my workspace for today. And you'll remember this from our last Oahu layout, the right side of that layout with my cute, um, my nephew and his wife's cute little ones enjoying their ice cream after a long day of fun in the sun. Um, so we're going to go ahead and flip this page over. And the first thing we're going to do today is go ahead and finish up a layout that I started a long time ago and if you've been watching my channel for a while then you might recognize this one this is the project recipe that I put together for a layout or for a um, collection that was called and of course it just flew out of my mind I knew it two seconds ago <sighs> but at any rate this is a layout that I did a while back and um, it was just kind of fun and so I wanted to pull it out and go ahead and use it for these photos because I felt like with the sweet treats to beat the heat it was perfect for this so I have um, I have a few photos and I have as I mentioned in the little intro I have enough photos that I can do two layouts for this experience at Matsumoto's and um, while it might be something that um, other people might want to use more peekaboo pockets to put all the extra pictures in or um, or eliminate some of them I just decided that because this is one of the last um, these are the last few layouts from this trip and I have room in my album I'm just gonna go ahead and do two layouts because um, because it's fun to do and I don't mind so um, I have sort of laid out the photos where I'm where I would like to put them but I'm going to need to crop them real quick so if you'll bear with me here and we'll save this one for the last because I'm going to actually combine two photos for that one. But each of these photos, because the mats that I made, you can see, are the same size as my photos virtually. So I'm going to take each of these photos, I'm going to cut them down by a quarter of an inch, or maybe, rather than a quarter of an inch, I'm going to do three-eighths of an inch, which is actually just... Um, just beyond the cutting mat to that next little line not the not the grid line but the you if you've used your trimmer for a while you can kind of denote the next little line in there and that's roughly three-eighths of an inch it's probably just shy of three-eighths of an inch but um, as long as it's the same on both sides I think I, it will work just fine so I'm just going to trim off the same amount on both sides so that I get an equal frame that goes all the way around my photo. Okay, and then this mat, again, is a four by six. So we're just going to cut or trim off um, that same amount from both sides. Actually, this is a little bit trickier because I'm trying to get it off both sides so that my treat stays in the center is a little bit tricky. So I'm just trimming off about half of the amount on either of the long sides so that I can put that right there. 
This one up here is going to be a smaller, um, for a smaller mat, so you can see, because that's a four by four mat. So that means my picture needs to be three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So obviously I'm going to need to cut uh, quite a bit of it off. So let's see, I want this sign right here that talks about the bees and um, so I don't want to cut that off and it looks like I can fit that in and get the sign in which is what I was hoping for so that's perfect. So we're going to trim that there and flip it around and make sure that this is three and three quarters. Trim off that edge as well and then I think I think we'll go with trimming it from the top so that we have that photo for up there. This one I'm going to go ahead and trim. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I'll trim this one from the bottom so we can still see kind of their board up there even though there's not a lot of pertinent information. There's a little bit. And then we'll take just a little bit of this side as well. Sorry, sweetheart. Okay. And so that picture will go there. And then this one up here that has all their different flavors and stuff. This one's very cool. I like this one. So we'll take a quarter from the top and we'll take a quarter from this side because this side's a little bit longer and it'll center our menu just a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it's close. There we go, okay. Now, this other photo that we have over here, I'm gonna be welding together. You can see where I had the sign Here's the edge of the sign. This is the church that the sign is talking about. Um, and so I just thought it would be a good, it would be good continuity. This church sits um, almost directly across the street from Matsumoto's. So um, kind of a cool thing. And I'm just going to put a little adhesive on that. And then we're going to come in here and line it up best we can with the sign. I'm gonna lean that in because the sign post is not super wide. There, that'll work. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is come in here and um, cut. Now you can see it's a little crooked. If I, if I put that up on my shoulder, you can see that this edge is not straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center this. I want three and three quarters, remember. So we're going to we're going to center that so that we get a nice um, all the details that we want right in the middle of that photo, just like that. And then I'm going to use my bottom edge to to cut the other side. Okay. So there's, there's that. Now what we need is a five and three quarters length picture. And I don't want to cut all of the church out, so I'm going to, I'm going to trim this just a little, get it a little bit closer to the words on the sign so that I have more of the church building that's behind it in the picture. And then I can still, I'll still have a mat that goes around the edge. Okay, so this is a five and three quarters photo. Five and three quarters by three and three quarters. And we turned two pictures into that one picture so that we can see all the details. I love it when that works. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and just adhere these photos down and I'll be right back. Alright, so um, this page, actually, we're not quite there yet. Thought we were, but we're not quite. I need to go ahead and add this to my page. So let me go ahead and I'll just add this. And um, while I'm doing this, I'll just explain. As I was um, adding all the adhesive to this layout and putting my photos on I remembered that this is a layout that I did in a class in a virtual class so um, and I'll just do a quick little plug here for the CM sisters um, CM, the CM sisters online virtual cropping group are um, my uplines upline so I guess they're my they're my upline. Um, they're a great group of ladies. And this is a layout that I did, in, I think, in the summer crop that we did um, last year, maybe? Um, I can't remember for sure, but I think it was last year. And so um, there is no video for it on my channel because I can't share that. You need, to, if you like this, and you need to um, look them up on Facebook and I believe you can still, um, I think you can still register and get the content from that class if you would like this one. If, um, if not, I would just suggest that you go ahead and um, participate in the upcoming virtual crop that they're doing, which is gonna be the, f the um, first weekend in December. And I think you can find information on that. I'll see if I can get a link that I can put in the description for you so you can get information on that. Um, and they'll let you register for that, I think, all the way up until the last day or even during it um, so that you can participate and you can get all the information. And, and um, they have great, great ladies that provide really nice, um, fun content and um, it's fun to spend time with them. They're just a great group. So. Um, Anyway, if you're interested, and it's not super expensive, so um, if you're worried about it being, you know, something that's going to cost you a lot of money, it's it's really not. It's I think it's like twenty or twenty-five dollars for Friday night and all day Saturday. You get like eight different classes, um, so it's really it's really well worth it, and I always have a good time. You can um, access all the recordings later if you can't make it to the exact event right on time. Um, so that's also a benefit because I can't always um, scrap along with everyone as they do the class, but then you can go back to it later and, and do it in your on your own time. So that's not a problem. Um, this last mat right here, I don't have a photo that will work here in this spot. So when, what I'm going to do is use a mat to create a journal box. I'm going to place that just slightly lower on the field of lemons. Um, this is a mat from a totally different collection because I didn't have mats for some reason. I couldn't find them. Must have used them all from this collection. So, um, but I just need a little bit of room to write some journaling here and then the rest of this blue blends with the rest of the blue I think well enough that it'll work. And then this is the beginning of another day. So uh, this is day nine so I'm going to go ahead and place our day marker on here probably down here where it's a little bit um, out of out of the way. All right, 
Now, um, in addition to that, I almost forgot, I have these cute little things. So I bought um, some cute little hair clips. They had some beautiful stuff in the gift shop at Matsumoto's. And um, I bought these really, really pretty hair clips for my girls. And they came on these rather sturdy cardstock um, pieces of paper with the Matsumoto's logo on it. So I decided, wouldn't it be fun to save that and put it in my scrapbook, of course, right? So I'm just going to use my small circle from my custom cutting system, my red blade, which is going to cut as close as possible to that inside circle. There's going to be a couple of divots in the circle because of the cuts that are already on the tag, but, um, but that's okay. I just thought it would be kind of a fun thing to include. So there's one. Let me see if I can do the other one. And then that way I can put one on, maybe one on this layout and one on the, uh, the next layout we're going to do which will also include photos for Matsumoto's. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and toss those and trim this little tiny bit that my blade didn't cut, quite cut all the way through. There we go. Okay. Now I have no way of knowing if this is photo safe made from photo safe paper it's um, it could very well not be so I really don't want to put this where it's going to be touching a photo just so that you are aware and I'm gonna save those until um, I'm done with the other layout and then we'll decide where they need to go but just so you know that is gonna that is gonna happen before we're done so flipping the page let me bring down the next um, photos and the next layout that we're going to do. Um, so you'll notice, or if you are, if you're familiar with these papers, you'll notice that this paper that I used is actually um, a Fasta Fab style printed sheet of paper. So it's um, almost like a designer sheet of paper, but it's printed um, with other patterns from the collection, so that it's a fast to fab oriented thing. Oh, I'm gonna have to come, go back and secure the rest of those pictures too, but I'll do that later. Um, so I wanted to continue that with this next layout so that um, they both had kind of the same feel. And I have these two papers, which I thought would be really appropriate. They're very cute. We could turn them to the side like this and create uh, um, borders down the outside of the page or we could do borders across the bottom or we could do one on the bottom one on the top there's just so many varieties that you can do with these type of papers you could do one going up one going across or the other way around so it's just really really flexible I think because all of these kind of go together I'm gonna stick with it across the bottom and I pulled a piece of our standard red cardstock, so it's that bright, bright red. And then this is one of the only pieces I have left from this collection. And I'm fairly sure this was Sunrays for Days. If you know differently, would you make sure you put it on, in the comments so that other people know for sure? For some reason, I'm so sorry, but my brain's just not connected and remembering that today. Um, I have an enlargement of the two of us with both of our treats and so that I would really like to go ahead and mat and I'll probably use red to mat that one. I also have several photos that show the process as they made our ice cream and then one of my husband enjoying his. So I've got four of the process and then I've got the enlargement and Nimrod enjoying his um, shaved ice. So I can get three I can get three mats out of one of the out of this one yellow piece of paper and then the, the other 
um, three photos will need to be matted with the red. So that'll be fine because that'll balance pretty well, I think. I'm going to take this piece of paper that I have. This is six and a half by 12. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this at four inches, which is going to mean that I'm going to need to cut it down actually so that it's even. So we're going to make this a six a six inch border and we'll have this extra half inch of yellow we might be able to do something with. And I'm going to make three six by four mats. Okay, so one and two and three. And then we're going to trim some of our photos just a smidge so that they fit in those mats. This one, let's see, this one we'll trim on this side. Just going to trim a quarter of an inch off like I did with those other photos, right? And I, these are some kind of awards that they had won. I don't know. I wish I could read those better to tell you what those say. Um, but as soon as I get these all trimmed up and mounted, I can go through and explain to you what they were doing in each of the shots in case you're curious. Um, so just give me a second here while I trim these up. All right, now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut a mat for this photo, but I don't know if we need all these people kind of milling about over here in our photo. So I'm gonna actually cut this down, I think, and make this a six inch, six inches wide. So that it's just a little bit more focused on the two of us which means that my mat is going to end up being six and a half inches. I'm gonna pull my arm out just so that I can make sure I'm measuring it appropriately and I'm not guessing. So we're gonna go with six and a half, six and a half, and it's five inches this way, so five and a half inches going that direction. Okay, so that's the mat for this larger photo. That works well. All right, and then I have just an, a regular six by four that I need for the other two photos that we've got. Yeah, I think there's two of them that I need at, at six by four. So let's, we'll just turn or go ahead and trim these mats so they're good to go. And then I can go ahead and get those done. I think this one's going to be short. Yep, five and a half. So we will measure this at six and then trim it so that it is six by four. There we go. So now I should have all of my mats and be able to adhere all of those. So let's go ahead and I'll get that done real quick. Hold on a second. So I've got I've got my five mats. I need to make sure that I know where those mats are going to be, so that or where those photos are going to be, so that I can um, not have 
red right next to red, yellow right next to yellow, if I can avoid it, right? So this is kind of the process that we that they went through to create our um, snow our snow cones, snow cones, our shaved ice. We had they ha um, I ordered mine a little bit different than Nimrod ordered his, so I ordered mine with some ice cream underneath it. So they put a mound, you can see right here, there, if you can see really carefully, there's, some, there's a scoop, a large scoop of vanilla ice cream right there, okay? And then what they would do is come in with the shaved ice. These machines right here shave all the ice rather rapidly and make a big pile underneath. And so they would come in with these scoopers and they would pack the ice all around the ice cream or they would make a big mound of ice in the middle and pack it down. So this one right here is um, this one is mine that they were putting um, no this one is Nimrod's that they were putting um, the syrup onto after packing it down and he did not have ice cream on the bottom of his, but he did have sweet um, sweet cream or um, what did they call it? I would have to look at the menu. He had, let me flip this back over. Sweet and, he had condensed milk put over his, which is a thing I had never heard of before. So he, um, so I had ice cream underneath my shaved ice. He had sweetened condensed, or he had condensed milk poured over the top of his. So you'll see as you look at his right here, his looks different on top because they poured that sweet milk over the top. And I did not have that on mine. I only had the ice cream underneath. So a little bit different. Um, so this one will go here. And we've got kind of the progression of, of the milk. So let's do, let's do yellow and red and yellow and red and yellow, like that. I don't know if I like that. More like that. Somehow I like that better, even though it's not really that big of a difference. Okay, now I'm gonna finish adhering these photos on. So let's go ahead and we'll stick these photos down and um, I think we are, it would be fun to go ahead and add a, um, to go ahead and add some additional, an additional border. And I happen to have this, um, laser border that matches the laser border on the other layout so we could use this version or we could flip it over and use the red version on this page which is just a little bit different and we could put this across the top or we could add it to the sunshines that are down here at the bottom and hmm we could put it even all the way at the bottom. If we put it across the top here, then I can put a title across the bottom here because this photo is going to go 
right there. So we won't be able to do a title all the way across, but I could do a title all the way across here. And then we could add maybe a couple of other embellishments um, here or there. So I kind of like that idea. Let me trim this in half. So let's let's find the halfway mark and I'll grab my precision scissors and we'll have it span the layout, span the two pages so that um, half is on one side and half is on the other. Six is going to be right here right between those two. So I think what I'll do is go ahead and just make that cone go all the way up. And I'll put that right in there. Let me trim this up just a little bit because it's kind of it's making it look really obvious that I cut something which I don't really want. I don't want it to be obvious. Okay, so we'll put that in on that side. All right. And I'm going to use my repositionable adhesive on this so that I can just pull it right across and it doesn't show up in any of the gaps, which is so fun. One of the best things. Can't, when I think about it, sometimes I can't believe that I put off trying the repositionable adhesive for so long. Hopefully you are not stubborn like I am. And you saw the benefits right away and used it. And I think what I'll do is I will kind of do a step one and write underneath and a step two and write underneath. That way I don't need a um, journal box necessarily for this layout. I can just add the journaling right under the photo. Just, just a little. Okay. I love this shot because you can see all the different bottles of flavoring that they have down here in front of them to put on that ice cream. I think um, I think this list is is much more comprehensive, of course, but there's at least there's at least 30 different flavors there that they can add to the ice. So pretty amazing stuff. And you could pick multiple different flavors. You can see um, Nimrod had three flavors. I had three flavors. I think you could get more than three flavors if you wanted. which was very cool. Okay. We're going to line this up best we can. Just gonna kind of 
layer these couple. We'll scoot this a little bit more towards the outside so that if I need a little more space for the title, I will um, have it to utilize. Does that make sense? So I can use all of this um, for the title if I need to. And I think I'm going to try to tuck him underneath here just a smidgen. I love the eyeball. <laughs> All right. Um, so we are going to do the title down here, which I will have to do another time. I do have these two, which I thought were very cool, but I don't know how to. I think that might be too much to try to do. So we'll save those for another layout. And I'm going to grab some stickers. And I have these cute stickers that say sweet treats. I have a couple of those. So I want to use those if I can get them off of here. Somehow they kind of got stuck down on top of other stickers and with other stickers on top of them. So hang on just a second here. There. Sweet treat, sweet treat, sweet treats. Maybe we'll use the third one just because we can. And create a third little icon. We'll put right here. Let me grab my foam squares. Which have taken off on me, so I guess I'll be opening this package. I know I have some other sheets though somewhere around here. That's a clear sign that I need to clean up my table. All right. Okay, so we'll, we will add a few of these. to there and then add a couple to the tops. kind of in the middle. Sweet treat, sweet treat. All right, let's see what else can we use. <laughs> Got a sunshine. Got a sun. We've got some flowers we could use. <laughs>
Let's see. We should put a sun up there in the corner, I think. Blue skies and sunny days. Blue skies and sunny days that we're going to pop this up to. So there's a big old foam square we can put on the end of that. Couple little ones on these smaller pieces. So that it's kind of a little bit, a little bit on the photo, to kind of draw our eye over there. Need something else over on this side, maybe right in here, or possibly out here. Let's see. I've got these flowers that are that are really cute. Maybe we can say beat the heat with this fan and add the flowers to it. Beat the heat. Like that. That'll work. Okay, let's see. I think I'm going to put add just another little one right here for that little piece that comes off the top. That's a lot of foam squares for that one, but there are a lot of little pieces to it. And I didn't want it to come apart, so I think it will be good. We'll just kind of add that on top of the photos there to kind of... Right. So I think that is where we are going to stop, although I see these hearts on here and I feel like I feel like these sweet treats need some love. So I'm gonna just add these little hearts in in there like that. That's cute. And I will do I, I will do a big title down here so that we have that and add the journaling. So we need another page to add this to. And then we will be good to go. All right. So here's our first page. And there will be, like I said, some journaling right in here. I actually might add a little something um, to this area right here, maybe. We'll see. I'll think about that for a little bit. But, um, so we've got this layout and then this layout to commemorate our trip to Matsumoto's. And and we'll be good. We just have a couple more in this series. Oh, I need to get these down also, these cute things. So these need foam square. 
and in a good spot. Matsumoto's shaved ice. We'll just kind of put that over over the ice cream. And over here, maybe that's what I can put kind of in this area right here. Maybe I'll just center it kind of over the journal box area. There, perfect. Okay. Let me know what you think about these two layouts. I think they were a lot of fun and I love how bright and cheerful they are. They remind me of how warm it was and what a beautiful sunshiny day this was that we spent um, on Oahu on the northern end of the island and um, or the kind of western end of the island that the North Shore area um, and super fun super great memories of a really fun place and I hope that if you ever get to go to Oahu that you make sure you stop and um, get a taste of their wonderful treats because they were very, very yummy. At any rate, I hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope it's been inspiring for you. And until next time, I hope you have many more creative moments. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day.